Hey everyone and welcome to another video uh, and welcome to the super messy super messy collection room and I know you're saying gee why on earth do you have so much stuff everywhere and to that dear viewers if you read the title of this video is because I've been going through and unhauling once again um, so First and foremost, as always with these unhaul videos, don't take any of these choices personally. The reason that I do regular unhauls is because I like to prioritize things that are my absolute favorite that I reread on a very constant level. So even though I might love a series, I know that I'm never going to read it again. Um, as well as stuff that I like, but I'm probably never going to get re revisit. As well as series that are like a one and done read. You know, you read it, all the twists and turns are pretty evident. You don't gain necessarily a huge amount um, rereading it. Or there's a lot to, um, like, uh, there's a lot that is, is pretty um, obvious after that first read. So that I'm never going to revisit. Or, of course, there are some things that I just don't like. But those are typically things that I bought one volume of and was like, eh, not for me. Although I don't think there's any of any of those in this, this particular <laughs> unhaul. Uh, I'm very, very picky for uh, my purchases, for what I support. Um... Those who've been following the channel for a long time know that, know that I don't buy every single release just because I don't have the time or the space or definitely the money uh, to do that. So um, this is just how I keep my collection in the state that I, I most prefer. And I also think it's an, a great habit to form if you can regularly kind of cleanse the collection make you look at the stuff that you own with new eyes. It really is important because so often I think people get caught up in the idea of having a really large collection, owning as much as you can. Right now with COVID, there's a huge amount of scarcity. So there's a huge amount of FOMO buying. Um, people are still kind of trying to yeah, occupy themselves, buy things, even if they're not necessarily really that certain about it, just because they need something to do, if that makes sense. Um, so, I'm going to go through everything that I am unhauling. Um, I might cut between a couple of different videos, so bear with me. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. First up on my unhaul stack is Kiss Him Not Me, the complete series, uh, reverse harem, comedy, you know, rom-com. That is very, like, very good. I do enjoy it. It has a lot of self-awareness for, like, Fujo culture, um, because Junko herself is a BL creator, or mangaka. Um, the premise, I mean, is problematic. Any, I think any series that the whole idea is fat girl loses weight, becomes attractive to a bunch of boys is inherently really problematic. But I will say that one, my, that my favorite boy doesn't fall into that. And two, my favorite boy wins. So I do think that maybe it's too little too late, uh, but it does, it doesn't actually stick to that premise of like, oh, well, the only person who could ever love her or people would only ever love her because now she's skinny and attractive, right? Um, I do think it kind of bucks that that grossness of a premise, uh, like which is typical for this. Oh my gosh! Don't knock things. Gee. Um, uh, underneath that, we also have High School Debut, which is a fun, you know, high school rom com, opposites attract piece. Really good. Really fun. Funny. Um, but similarly to Kiss Him Not Me, uh, I'm probably never going to read this again. Kiss Him Not Me, I, I'm happy. Like, I, the boy that I like won, I'm, it's, it's a good time. There, I, still, like, a couple groan-worthy spots. 
High School debut, similar thing. I like it. I like the relationship. Like a lot of the characters. Don't like a lot of the side characters. Or side relationships, maybe. Um, of what I can remember. Um, and, you know, ultimately I'm probably just not going to get back to it. Next in the stack is Nijigahara Holograph. Uh, Inio Asano's most obtuse manga maybe it's very good it for a long time was my favorite um and i do think that it's it is very very good but i've kind of you know, i i kind of go backwards and forwards on arsenal a lot and really rereading it it didn't capture me the same way that it did the first time um it is one that like you definitely need rereads for it's not like some of the other stuff for that I mentioned earlier where it's a one and done read it, it isn't that but I don't know how often I'll revisit it because I haven't in a really long time um next is bloom into you really solid yuri very very good um but another one that once I finished it I was happy satisfied unlikely to ever reread um compared to some of the other yuri that i do and have read um it's i have a little bit iffy on the couple to be perfectly honest with you i was more invested in the other like side characters and side couples other things going on in the world compared to the relationship and that's not inherently a bad thing but I do think that you sh for the most part a romance is most effective when you enjoy both both characters involved um, or you you are you enjoy the relationship just kind of full stop then we have the first volume of spy classroom a recent light novel series I only got it maybe a month or so ago I read it pretty quickly it had fairly good reviews from a lot of different people. I wasn't impressed. I made that pretty clear in my monthly wrap-up or haul video when it whatever it was. Um, so yeah I just wasn't really impressed with the writing in general. It had a twist that um, I'm not gonna say was wasn't written well but if it was something that I picked up on really early and then I thought was a mistake and then get kept getting really confused because I was like trying to figure out why things were written certain ways and like it, it becomes obvious as to why but I just got was really frustrated by the end of it. I was like, oh, this is kind of clunky and annoying. Um, so yeah, not gonna, not gonna read that one anymore and uh, that needs to find a new home. We have Galaxy Girl and Panda Boy and Sweat and Honey. Um, Galaxy Girl, Panda Boy by Junko Kawakami. Sweat and Honey by Mari Okazaki. The, these are both Jose um, short story collections put out by Tokyo Pop way back in the day. Their failed passion fruit line, um, which is a cute, I think, uh, imprint uh, name. They're good. They're fine. Um, not gonna reread them probably. Uh, I I think it it was a notable kind of effort for for the Tokyo Pop to try and branch out into um, into oh Jose <laughs> like what are my where are my words? Um, but you know they these two short story collections aren't really strong enough to stand on their own and there wasn't any like really standout story in either of them to make me want to keep them around. Um, underneath that is Yuri Bearstorm, uh, which is Akiko Morishima's uh, adaptation of uh, Yuri Kuma Arashi. Cute, sweet, more so focused on the adult relationships of the series. Um, interesting interpretation. 
really wonderful to see that, um, again, like, not to give Tokyo Pop too much credit, but it was, it was interesting to see, uh, them putting out Morishima's work first, first, uh, out of all the publishers, um, but, you know, again, not one that I'm probably going to reread. We now have a lot more of her work available, and despite the Ikuhara kind of connection, um, you know, it's fine. I've Again, it's one that I've read. I'm probably not going to reread again. Uh, beneath that is My Boy 1 to 7. It's a nine-volume series, not yet complete in English. A uh, story of a 30-year-old woman and her friendship relationship with a 12-year-old boy. Um, this one really, like, walks the line. I, I don't know how it ends. I've heard kind of mixed but generally positive things about it. Uh, the ending, I don't know spoilers, but I just, I don't know if it's like an open ending. Oh, well, they might get together or when, once they're older. Like, I think he's 15, 17 by the end of it. And she's, you know, 34, which is a bit, as though so much, so, oof. Um, but for what it is, this has always been, like, the early stuff especially, when there wasn't a romantic lilt to it, uh, was really very beautiful about two people finding comfort in each other, two lonely people com finding comfort in each other. And even up until, like, the later parts of the book where he, the, the kid is, like, more attentive and drawn towards her in a romantic sense. She doesn't, I mean, she might reciprocate, which is freaking weird, but, um, she doesn't ever act on it and it's an acknowledgement that it's wrong and weird and whatever. Again, I don't know how it falls out. I don't know. I'm kind of not willing to risk it. Um, but if it's, that's not an issue for you, if you don't mind, like, a large age gap what potential age gap romance. Um, if you do like seeing kind of intergenerational relationships, roman or, well, just like platonic and otherwise, um, this is really good at what it does. Honestly, the creepiest part about it is kind of the afterwards for a lot of them. Um, yeah, it, it is also, the artwork is beautiful in my boy, like really, really beautiful. Um, but yeah, it's it's one that I might finish digitally like once uh, Vertical slash Kodansha puts it out. But um, yeah, I, it's not one that I'm probably going to reread after it's done. And so I don't need it on my shelves. I also have Skullface bookseller Honda-san 1-4, to four, the complete series. Which is very funny, very sweet, great look into uh, retail, <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, it's really, really good, another one that I'm probably not gonna reread, just because I don't, like, comedies are kind of hard for me to reread, I honestly would just much prefer to have the short anime, um, because that, I think, captured the best parts of the manga, although that hasn't been licensed, so maybe one day, but yeah, Skullface Bookseller Honda-san is a great little series. I do recommend it. It's very funny, very witty, very, like, too real if you've ever worked retail. Um, but, yeah, it's not inherently, like, super rereadable. And I've left retail, and I, I never want to go back to retail. So I will leave that in the past. It's also really interesting to see kind of the ins and outs of uh, bookstores, most notably like Japanese big chain bookstores, um, which are still kind of a thing in there compared to like the death of the brick and mortar bookstore in the US. I know there's still like Barnes and Nobles and things, but I don't know if it's quite the same. Maybe it is. I don't know. I've never been to Barnes and Noble. Um, 
Then we also have the Japan and Korea anthologies from Fanfare Ponamon. Good collections, um, good books, some interesting inclusions in those, um, you know, in, in the anthologies, but yeah, another one that's just kind of fine. I'm not going to reread probably ever, so away they shall go. Next we have the Oron High School Host Club box set, the entire manga series, uh, volumes 1 to 18. This is, I mean, it's Oron High School Host Club. It's a fun, you know, uh, reverse harem comedy about a girl who is goes to a super fancy school despite being uh, not super wealthy or fancy uh, and ends up in the debt of one of the school's club, the Host Club who entertain the young female students, well actually any of the students, um, at the school per request. And uh, she has, has, is hiding her, um, hiding the fact that she's a girl to the rest of the school. The host club knows. Um, and it, you know, it's just a fun romantic comedy. It's one of the classics of that like mid 2000s it's a good time i i i very much enjoyed it it's also like a nice uh if you've only ever seen the mong or seen the anime if the manga has a lot more to it <laughs> a lot more story after after the point that the the anime adapts which is pretty cool because there's a lot of really fun characters and storylines and you get like all of the you know drama sad backstories for everyone as well um but you know I, host club will always have a fun spot in my heart bisco hattori um despite creating a cast which is 99 percent like the uber wealthy Made them all pretty likable. Um, Haruhi is wonderful. She's a great protagonist. And, you know, it, it was really cool for what it was at the time. Now, we've got, like, it, it, it laid the foundation for a lot of what, the cool stuff that we have today. It hasn't aged necessarily the best. Um, but it's still fun. It's still very much a classic it's still very much beloved and as i said it's still one that I will be near and dear and fondly remembered um but you know i it's it i've kind of grown out of oron and uh that's that's okay and if i ever want to revisit it i've got the anime it's it's fine i'm not gonna be completely cut it out of my life Next we have Versailles of the Dead, Volumes 1 and 2 by Kumiko Suikane. This is the saddest inclusion. <laughs> the saddest inclusion in this whole bunch. Um, this, I I think, just been dropped. I think just Seven Seas, it didn't sell well for them. Or the like manga side, the Japanese side, the publisher changed or something. Something happened because... Uh, this is complete in, in Japanese at five volumes. It's been several years since we got volume two, where I, I doubt, I heavily doubt that we will see the rest of it in English, which is really sucks because I really like one, Kumiko Suikane's work, but two, I really like this particular series of hers. Um, it's what if Marie Antoinette well, it's, it's, yeah, pre-revolutionary France, but zombies, and also if Marie Antoinette was killed by zombies on her way from Austria to France um, for her marriage, and her twin brother is now, take, like, pretending to be her to, to prevent, you know, war breaking out between the two countries, and there's some... Like, maybe he's also possessed by a demon. I don't know. It's cool. I really like it. It's just such a shame that it doesn't seem like we'll ever get any more of this. Um, and maybe I will be 
you know, proven wrong. I don't know. But I, I, mm, I don't like having unfinished series on my shelves, just generally. It just kind of bums me out. Um, and also, you know, there's nothing worse than an unfinished story, I think. Um, I mean, there is, there's over, overworked, uh, stories, things that, that outstay their welcome, but it's just really sad when a publisher has, isn't able to complete something, um, and there's not too many, like, incomplete series that I have in the collection. I think notably the only things that I can think of is... Wandering Sun and um, Bride of Deimos. Uh, I don't think there's any others that I have. Uh, I don't know. But yeah, you know, I'm sad about it, but I shall, I shall let it go. Uh, underneath that is that blue sky feeling, sweet little coming of age, um, L like LGBT story about two boys, two classmates, um, and one kind of realizing his sexuality went in so far as like be trying to be an ally to to his friend who is gay and then through that like coming to terms with his own feelings and identity it's really good um but you know it's fine and <laughs> again not one that I'm probably gonna reread just because there's a lot of other I don't want to say similar stories. That's not true. But, well, I mean, it is true. and that But that's not the reason. It's just, like, sweet, lovely. Um, I'm happy that Viz, with this series, was diversifying more into, like, LGBT stories that weren't just relegated to the, like, Sublime imprint. Uh, this is an own voices work as well, which is pretty cool. But yeah, not one that I'm likely to revisit uh, soon. Then we have again by Mitsuro Kubo. Really fun. Um, re like, oh, I do really enjoy this series. It's strong. It's got great characters. I love Kubo's ability for like expression, how expressive her, her characters are, how much, like how good of a cartoonist she is or a, a comic artist that she is this is a like um second chance series wherein a guy falls down the stairs uh, on his graduation day and is sent back to the first day of high school and he's given a second chance at, at his high school life and really like I really like Imamura our main character he's great um I like so much of the the cast all the supported characters um yeah Kubo is just really really good at creating realistic characters and realistic teens um too not super like I'm, I don't really like the romance element in this I just not that thrilled with it um, but this is one of those series where there's, like, a lot of twists and turns, and it's very funny, and there's kind of, like, a mystery going on as well, and it's one that I don't see myself rereading, uh, with the same fervor and with, like, the same captivation, uh, as I did the first time, which is not inherently bad but is just kind of part of part of what these sorts of series are so uh yeah again really really good I do highly recommend it um and I really like Kubo's work this is definitely the more um approachable compared to Moteki which is also very good but like ooh unlikable protagonist yeah um yeah but you know to to a new home it shall go. Then we also have Dolis, which is a single volume uh, Jose drama about a toxic relationship. Really interestingly printed. It's got color printing 
um, in it. Really a unique little book. Not the most light-hearted of reads. <laughs> And because of that, yeah, not one that I'm likely to revisit anytime soon. Um, you know, it's not fun reading about a toxic relationship. It's done well, but I don't... Mm, I don't want to reread it, if that makes sense. There's nothing that wants me to you know, pick it up again. Uh, and then we have Volume 1 of BL Metamorphosis. This is fantastically sweet, really, really lovely, but it's one that I continued digitally and, um, you know, I m assessed my thoughts and I have it digitally. I don't need it on the shelves. It's cute, a really wonderful um, one that I am happy that we got. Uh, totally understandable like why it's so beloved it's it's very good <laughs> recently completed at five volumes as well in English um, yeah but not one that I personally need in print on my shelves I have Genkaku Picasso by Usamaru Furia this is one of my favorite um, Furia series actually I love it I highly recommend everyone to read it um, but I find I don't revisit it enough, like, in the volume format, um, or on print. I don't need it in print, especially because this is one of those titles that is really readily available, um, on the Jump app. Like, I just, if I want to reread it, it's there, <laughs> right? Um, and maybe that may change in the future, but also, like, I won't be heartbroken if I am never able to reread this ever again but I do in saying that I do I do really like it I do think everyone should read it it's super good it's super super good um, and then we have Captivated by You which is uh, Yama Wayama short story collection about uh, high school to, um, high school boys it's very good beautiful beautiful artwork um I liked it again I'm, it's probably there wasn't really a story in it that stood out enough to me that I would want to reread it um again if that makes sense and I find a lot of short story collections this way like this isn't me picking on any particular series I I have very few like short story collections that aren't anthologies or aren't from creators that I really really love um normally yeah normally it's just kind of I, I can be left a little cold when there's not a huge amount to be uh a huge amount of time dedicated to particular stories then we have <laughs> speaking of then we have all of the Erika Sakurazawa releases from Tokyo Pop. These are all more Jose works. Um, all very strong, all very unique um, from a you know noted gal mangaka. Like this is definitely some of her seminal pieces and like they're really good, really interesting mix. Uh, I don't Again, as maybe this is a me issue, um, but like I didn't like any of the characters enough to be invested in their stories, and half the time, like most of the time, that's the point is that these are pe like people who make the wrong decisions. They're not likable characters, but and that's fine. Like that's great, and sometimes I'm really into it. Sometimes that's you know something I'm I'm all for I didn't especially because a lot of this is focused on romance or relationships between women um I don't know maybe I've just had so much like personal experience with like yeah, having to deal with people who aren't necessarily the best that I don't want to read it in my fiction. Um, 
So, you know, again, maybe it's a me problem, but I don't, it's, it's not something I want to keep hanging around. Um, underneath that is just a random volume of John Jeromatica. I, I don't like John Jeromatica. I've, <laughs> I've never made that, like, a secret, but that just came with, like, a lot of other books that, um, I bought for something else and... It's just been hanging around. Similarly, Penguin Drum Volume 3 is a duplicate. I own all or owned all of the others. Um, you'll see the rest of the series <laughs> pop up a little bit later, actually. Um, and, you know, I don't need duplicates for one, but I definitely don't need duplicates of Volume 3. Uh, keep your hands off of Azelken. Great series. Really unique, um, great anime, definitely the thing that got me into it. I think the story works better as an anime. I think it's just, that's, it's about an anime club. It's, uh, similarly to how I feel like a lot of music manga are better as anime, where you can actually hear the music, I think anything about animation is probably better see being able to see the animation that they're talking about. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Next we have Sweet Blue Flowers, Takako Shimura's Yuri, um, about two childhood friends who reconnect in high school and fall in love. And it's really good. I like a lot of the side characters. I'm a big Shimura fan. But again, probably not one I'm going to reread. Um, yeah, it's... Well, I've had it for a long time. And I have read it, of course. Super excited when Viz licensed it and released it. It's fantastic to see more of her works available in English. Um, but it's been like six years, five, six years. Um, and I haven't reread it once in that time, um, <laughs> which is not a good, uh, sentiment or like, obviously it, it's a good indicator that I'm not really wanting to reread it. Uh, and so away it shall go. And finally for the stack, we have all of the Nagita Ka Kabi, um, Nagata Kabi, um, What's it called? The <laughs> memoirs. Oh my goodness. Uh, my lesbian experience with loneliness, my solo exchange diary one and two, and my alcoholic escape from reality. Don't get me wrong. These are so powerful. Um, I'm so glad that we're getting these licensed. They are so important. I have an irrational like um, investment in Kabi's health and well-being like I really just want her to be okay um and each of these are like really interesting explorations of her mental health and her relationship with other people and her relationship with her addictions um it's just it they're it, ooh they're very powerful memoir uh but they're also a downer and I I will definitely be continuing following her works digitally, but they're not ones that I ever reread once I've read them the first time. Um, so I will be still supporting for her. I will still be wishing for her, you know, her best, best life, but I just, I can't, I don't want to, I don't need them on my shelves, if that makes sense. Um, and so, yeah, they, they've already found a new home, actually, so they will be getting packed up for shipping very soon. We have Soul Eater, the Perfect Editions, volumes 1 to 4. Uh, I really like Soul Eater. I think it's got a lot of, uh, spunk. I think it's quite, um, fun and funny and got a lot of character, I think it's pretty cool. Um, I really enjoyed the manga. 
when I read it, but it did have the major issue of just having really, yeah, like, e even when I read it the first time, I was like, ooh, the fan service, like, definitely ha impacts the story, kind of, to a negative sense, like, it just completely halts any kind of forward momentum, and although these are lovely books, although I do have, like, a lot of fondness for Soul Eater, and although this is the better release, um, just even translation-wise, I, rereading it, I'm just like, oh, yeah, I, I can't really get past the fact that oh, so much cool stuff is happening, and then, oh, we gotta just stop everything and have a boob joke it just I'm I'm less tolerant right <laughs> just, I've got a very high tolerance but I'm just very low tolerance for this sort of shenanigans nowadays if I want to revisit Soul Eater I've got the anime um that's that kind of manages to yeah tamper down some of the the worst of the odd pacing fan service after that we have non bar um fantastic little book one but ultimately one that i'm not going to reread and I, I have enough other stuff by musuki in a similar vein that i don't feel bad you know finding a new home for it it's not one that like i definitely need to have throughout my life <laughs> um I'm glad to find a new home. Then we have With the Light, Raising an Autistic Child, the complete series. Um, beautiful Jose's story about, well, raising an autistic child. It's about a young mother whose older son is born with autism and uh, a couple other developmental disorders. He's completely nonverbal and her having to ad adapt to that, um, kind of coming to terms with the fact that her child needs very specific things, very specific levels of care that are not, you know, that aren't standard. And the struggle within the Japanese, like, education and healthcare system to find the support that her, her son needs it's very, very good. Um, a super sweet, tragically cut short due to the death of the mangaka. It's just overwhelmingly kind hearted and works really hard to be understanding and genuine and accepting and educating like educational for those who may not especially on the Japanese side like may not have come across someone with autism before I think it, autism awareness is like a lot further nowadays than it was when the series was coming out and I think we're a lot more aware of it in western society as well compared to like parts of Asia and other countries just because of whether it be social stigma or just lack of, uh, you know, societal discussion about it, or whatever, right? So, um, this was actually Yen Press's very first manga ever released. It's really, really good. Um, impossible to hunt down and print, but I do think you can still get it digitally, maybe? I don't really remember. Um, it's definitely worth a read if you can find it, and if it interests you. Um, yeah. I just, I'm, I'm glad that I was able to read it. It is very, uh, genuine, very, very heartfelt. And I can see how important it was to Keiko Tobe to tell this story. And it's just a shame that she was never able to, um, complete it in the form that she wanted, um, before her death. So we have Utena After the Revolution, um, a follow-up sequel, kind of, to the Utena manga. I, I mean, it was a long time coming to get this license. Really cool. 
that Viz did release it. It's an interesting read, interesting interpretation. Uh, I liked it a lot. Uh, like with anything Utena, it's um, a little bit obtuse, but you can, well, I mean, you might, it might be a bit obtuse. It's not exactly straightforward, but it's probably less obtuse compared to some of the other Utena stuff that's around. Uh, it's good, but yeah, not another one that I'm probably not going to reread. And uh, I'm kind of, yeah, just uh, finding an, a new place for it. Then we have Blue Spring by Taya Matsumoto, a short story collection that's, uh, it's fine. Um, I was never super impressed by it, and despite being a huge Taya Matsumoto fan, I just, it was kind of like a thing that I had, um, so I'm finally just biting the bullet and, <laughs> and getting it off of the shelf. Um, it's, it's better suited for someone who will appreciate it more. Then we have Haru's Curse by Asuka Konishi. Very, very good, um, you know, drama series about a woman who is dating her sister's former fiancé um, after the death of said sister. Uh, it's, it's, oh, it's good. I liked it a lot. It's wonderful. Um, but another one that I'm probably not going to reread. I just, um, and if I do want to reread it, it, I, it's available digitally. It's not like a huge, um, investment. Uh, yeah, it's really interesting and intriguing. It's one that has a lot of, like, ups and downs to it and a really interesting look at a very complicated situation and complicated relationship. And I really liked it. Um, so yeah, I recommend it, but I'm, I'm still getting rid of it. Next we have Pep, uh, Pepita, which is Inoue meets Gaudi. Uh, obviously it's a book documenting, uh, Inoue's works, uh, in relation to Gaudi. And uh, that's, it's pretty much that. It's part art book, part educational, um, and all around pretty cool. It's a, it's a unique little book put out by Viz, but I think, you know, his name kind of is what pushed that into being, being done. Then we have A Distant Neighborhood and The Walking Man by, both by Jiro Tanaguchi. Um, these are both really good as well, but I, like, I appreciate and respect a lot of Tanaguchi's works. They're a little bit too for boomers for me, right? Like, he's definitely, or he was definitely writing for men of his generation, and not to say that they're not interesting or compelling or, you know, uh, emotive or empathetic stories, they absolutely are, but he's, he's writing for people who kind of were born immediately, like, uh, boomers, right? Like, post-war, a very, very different Japan who, and, and exploring their relationship with their parents who did survive the war or, you know, had to, their experiences going through the war and, um, there's, I mean, The Walking Man is, that's a distant neighborhood. The Walking Man is is very um, internally meditative. It's pure slice of life um, about you know appreciating the everyday around your neighborhood, and it's lovely. It's beautiful. Tanaguchi was a phenomenal creator. Uh, there's no question of his talent, but as a twenty eight year old woman. Um, his stuff just, I can appreciate his stories, I can't place myself into his stories, which is fine, like, you don't need to, and you don't, that, that's not a requirement to, um, you know, for success either, obviously, uh, but, yeah, they're just, they're written by a boomer, and it, it's very much for 
boomers, which is fine. Again, like, that's totally fine, but I'm not a boomer. <laughs> like, it's just, that's not me, though, also. Um, yeah, but I, I'm really happy that Fanfare Upon and One is making more of his stuff available in English. And uh, he does have some more more titles being released as well. So um, keep an eye out for them if you're interested. Then we have Wave Listen to Me by Hiraki Samura. This is my favorite of Samura's works. I really love it. I'm following it digitally. Like, I follow the simulcast, simul pub of it, whatever it is. Um, well, through Crunchyroll. I should probably, like, switch to Azuki or something. Um... <laughs> But I'm up to date with it. I never reread these these like actual collected volumes and it's it really feels like one of those one and done stories for me. Um, I love the characters, it's fun, it's funny, the premise is great, but yeah, I'm I'm just not gonna come back to it, I don't think. Then we have Fruits Basket, another the sequel manga to Noski Takuya's um, you know uber popular fruits basket uh i am very positive towards this sequel actually if you've just watched the uh, or just listened to i should say the podcast the fruits basket fruits basket podcast that i put together with my co-host and our wonderful guest uh we talk about fruits basket another and i do think that for what it is it's very good um, it's compared to the main series, not something that I'm super invested in or interested in. Like I read it, it was fine. Um, I like it for a lot of reasons. I also don't care enough about it to keep it around. <laughs> that might be mean, but like it's, it's reality, right? We have 1 to 23 of Hikaru no Go. This is the entire series. Uh, it's not all in the frame, but take my word for it. Um, I love Hikaru no Go. I think this is the best work that Obata has ever worked on. Um, Yumi Hota, I wish she was making more stuff. Love Hikaru, love Akira, love Sai, love all just like a whole bunch of the cast. It's wonderful. Um, if I want to reread it, it's on the jump app. Right, like it's, I I don't need it on the shelves, and it's a pretty long series. It's probably the longest out of everything that I've talked about so far. Um, yeah, it's it's fantastic, and I'm sure someone else will love it as much as I did. Then we have the Akira box set. Um, I mean, <laughs> what do I say? I like Akira. I think this is a beautiful box set. I think it's fantastic that this incredibly popular and influential work finally got a full release, unflipped, all, you know, yada yada, you know, completely fantastic art book, all of that. Um... I'm not as much of an avid fan of Akira as other people, or even of, like, Otomo in general. Uh, I enjoyed it. I experienced it. I liked it. I'm not gonna revisit it. <laughs> and someone else deserves to have this fantastic edition of their favorite series ever more than I do. Um, so yeah. And then next to that we have Dementia 21, um, Shintaro Kago's, uh, yeah, two volume series about a, uh, elderly care or aged care worker and all of the crazy shenanigans, uh, in typical Kago style, of uh, which is like also abiding commentary about how society treats treats its elderly um it's very good it's weird and wonderful and incredibly cargo it's uh yeah another one that like someone else can enjoy and love 
and have forever in this beautiful box edition as well because I'm, you know, I've had my time with it. I l like really like Cargo and uh, I like his work a lot, but it's just not something I revisit enough to keep around. More books that are to be sold. Um, actually, this, all of these are going to the same person. I've already sold them, actually. So we have the box set for Revolutionary Girl Utena, the ma manga. Uh, great adaptation, really interesting, uh, very beloved by a lot of people. Um, lovely box set as well. Will I read it again? Probably not. Um, and it is quite hard to find this box set, I believe. I don't know whether that's just because of the COVID situation or what. But yeah, so that one. Uh, yes, No, or Maybe, which is a BL light novel that I wasn't super enamored with. Um, it was fine, but I probably won't be reading anymore. We have Tableau Numero 20 by Estem which is actually a duplicate, so I actually I still have my copy. Um, so nice to have a good home for that. We have The Cornered Mouse Dreams of Cheese and The Carp on the Chopping, or chopping Block Jumps Twice, both by Satona Mizushiro. Um, very well-regarded dramatic BL. Uh, very good. Long time coming uh, to be licensed. Again, not one I can see myself rereading uh, in the future. Volumes 1 to 4 of Penguin Drum, the five volume manga adaptation of, um, yeah, of the series. Really good. Uh, not enough changes in it to be worthwhile for me personally. I do like to read a lot of the um, Ikuhara stuff like different adaptations and Penguin Drum is personally my favorite of of his anime but um, notably the reason that I really like to get into the manga and light novels and things is because of how they take on different aspects of the story and this does to an extent but not enough that I was enjoying it um, as much as I thought I would because as I said the the original is like my favorite favorite Sharing My Destiny, one volume, BL, very cute, not really that, like, it's fine, it's cute, sweet, but, eh, it's what it is. Kisses, Macarons, and Lonely Pie by uh, Kuma. This is an explicit short story collection. Um, you know, it's fine. It's, I didn't really find it all that interesting. It, it's not the, uh... It's not typic the typical kind of BL that I enjoy, um, but it, yeah, it's good for what it is. Uh, BL fans love My Brother, which is a one-volume comedic manga from Tokyo Pop. Again, fine. Um, good for a chuckle. We'll probably never read it again. <laughs> um, volumes 1 to 5 of The Witch and the Beast, which is actually very, very good. I'm following it digitally, but will not be continuing in print, and this is actually leftover from my last unhaul, so I'm glad that I'm able to finally find it at home. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's very good, really, um, great for fans of, like, dark fantasy stuff. Uh, it's atmospheric, it's really interesting, but as, uh, cutthroat as I am with my sort of space and time and spending, uh, I prefer to keep my shelves open for stuff that I really, 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 really love. So this one um, has found a new home. And then we have Love at 14, uh, almost ended. I think tw volume 12 is announced for the last volume. Uh, kind of subtle um, love story about two young teens and also various people around them. Uh, ooh, all of the side couples are like not good, not interested, very problematic in certain aspects, but the main couple is very cute, um, and I was reading it for that. It's fine, it's not like horrendously offensive, although be wary that it does have like a student-teacher dynamic, it does have um, like a lot of these young teens crushing on older people or people who are not or not appropriate for them to be like it's fine for them to be crushing on them but you wouldn't want those relationships to be 
um, reciprocated necessarily. So yeah, this is uh, this is a go. <laughs> and then um, so that's all for one person. They have very kindly given a new home to all of these things. And then down here we have all of Vagabond actually. Volumes one to twelve. Very good series. I really like Vagabond. Um, it's not like half the time when I unhaul, or actually most of the time when I unhaul things, it's not because they're, it's a bad series, or it's the worst thing I've ever read, or anything like that. Um, if, I mean, I know this is a kind of controversial take, um, to be getting rid of Vagabond, especially when it's so many people's favorite, or they love it. It's good. I don't disagree. It did take me a while to get into it, similarly to Blade of the Immortal, which is another series I no longer own. Um, I like the cast. I think it's personally... I haven't read Real, but it's personally my favorite of Inoue's works. Um, it's just been... I've had it a long time, and I have not reread it, aside from the first time that I... Like, aside from the first time that I read it, I haven't reread it, basically. Um, and I've had the series for years and years and years now at this point. Um, it's also on hiatus, kind of like a soft end slash, uh, yeah, not probably not coming back. Uh, who knows? Maybe that'll change, considering that Inoue is working on real again. But, you know, it's, it's not it's like a lot of these kind of tentpole shonen, not shonen, seinen <laughs> titles that are sort of the darlings of a lot of manga fans. Um, they're fine. They're not my favorite things. They very rarely, like, change my life to an extent that I would want to reread them a huge amount of times. I do like the setting. I do like the characters. I do like this reimagining of the Musashi story. Um, you know, it's a very well done manga. It's just a very well done manga that I have read and will probably not reread. And I know that, well, it's evident that this uh, is a very beloved series because this was the series when I posted my like online sales listing uh, locally. So everyone watching this probably didn't see it. Uh, <laughs> they, like, this was the series that everyone was clamoring for. Everyone wanted it. Um, so it was just kind of luck of the draw, the first person to inquire, which was like within 10 minutes of posting that ad. Um, they, they lucked out and they got it. Um, but yeah, it's, it, I'm happy that it's getting a new home. If it ever comes off of hiatus, I will continue reading it probably digitally versus, um, versus print, um, or through my library, because this is another series that, again, has a really strong library presence, at least to the places that I go. Um, so yeah, I won't be missing out, necessarily, with this.